I have a book that might help you understand that part more. It has a picture in it that doesn't really answer the question, but it can help you wrap your mind around it. I would love to see it. I'll get it for you in a bit. Betty had been dipping her tea bag in her mug, even though it was way past the point of being properly steeped. She chuckled along with them. If it's in that office of yours, you may never see it again. She looked at Rob. Total pigsty in there. Hush up, woman, Rich said to her jokingly. I know exactly where it is. Then he turned to Rob. Let's not get off track here. Why do you think certain people suffer this affliction? Rob got serious again. Well, like I said, you mentioned them mixing with the human race and they had offspring. The offspring could pass as normal, but they could access that demon side when they needed to. You said they did it mostly for battles. Rich nodded. I just relayed the information as I received it from other older texts. Well, maybe that created a new race and that race is being hunted down? You think that we are descendants of a monster race? Rob felt a little embarrassed. It does sound stupid when you say it like that, but my father had some other kids, and I know that at least one of them has been hurt. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't by their hands. It's a leap. You mentioned the half-race, and I thought that a lineage could be a reason for the people being targeted. Are they just going after whoever they can? Trying to wipe out the whole human race or something? No. You were closer with your first theory. They have never bothered Betty here. Without me. Some nights we sleep apart if we're on different schedules and she can sleep with the light off just fine. Right, dear? That's right, she replied. That's a hell of a way to have to piece this together, Rob. I'm sorry. Rich spoke with total empathy. Rob was nonplussed. I don't really know my father or the other kid, but that's what made me think of a connection. Genetics is the key word. Sounds like your mother can sleep with the lights off also. Yeah, Rob agreed. Well, the bloodline is quite diluted by now. Those tribal women and those repressed Victorian ladies, who, incidentally, would summon them to come usually for sexual exploration but would always cry rape to seem proper afterward, are the most recent documentation on the crossing of the species. It could still be happening, but I don't think that there is enough awareness for it to be creating many more of us. We are, like most of the human race, mutts. It goes back further, though. The earliest record of a woman summoning one to breed is in the 8th century. She was from a Viking clan. They were at war with another clan that was more akin to the likes you probably know about, the kind that rapes and pillages. They were not all like that. It was a time of global exploration and expansion, and that does inevitably lead to casualties. But there were creeds and rules of conduct and engagement even back then. Some of the Vikings were more like rogue pirates, and they reveled in the killings and plundering. The woman of the nobler clan had a son, half-human and half cosianth demon. It looked like any normal boy— but she helped him perform the ritual to activate his other side, and he transformed into a little beast. He looked more like the demons. His facial features remained, but they were faded. He grew fast. There were sacrifices made to him to feed him. He was strong and dangerous. When he was strong enough, he was unleashed on the neighboring tribe who had become their oppressors. He wiped them out overnight in their sleep. So the story goes. Wait a minute. Rob held up his hands. Can only people related to them summon them? That's the theory. That's what gives the connection in the first place. Then how could those women call them to begin making the half-race if they themselves were not descendants? That's chicken in the egg territory. Who's to say that they were not descendants? That is just the earliest documentation on record. They all did have to start somewhere. If these beings can enter our world to come for this objective, then it is likely they came before for another reason. Maybe that first reason was exploration. I doubt it was for expansion. We have too much sunlight here. I guess that makes sense. It makes as much as any of this can. Do you know what the ritual is for activating that side? Yes, it's in the book. It was part of Duke's secure library. Was, Rob chuckled. He knew what Rich meant. It was too relevant to the answers I was looking for. I'm going to have one hell of a late fee. Rob smiled. I found it comforting to have it around recently as well. We had a visitor a few weeks ago. It was in the living room, waiting for me. Oh my god. I woke up scared. I haven't needed the lights to stay on for a long time, but I began to feel that nostalgic kind of fear creeping up in the back of my mind, and one night when Betty and I were sleeping apart, the wall began to crack in my room. I was quick with the lamp again and that stopped it. Betty thought I was Looney Tunes when I went and got her. The wall had gone back to normal by then. I did not, she protested. Yes, you did, but I don't blame you. What she thought was a subject I had always just been fascinated with was becoming a real threat. She slept with me every night after that. One night I got really thirsty and I said I was going to get a glass of water. Betty said she was thirsty too and that she wanted a glass of milk. She offered to go get us the drinks. I said I would, but she insisted. 
She saw it standing in the dark in the living room. Oh, it still creeps me, she said. I was groggy, but I know our home's layout, so I didn't need to turn on the lights. I was walking to the kitchen, but when I almost got to the living room, I stopped right there in the hallway. She pointed at the area she had stood in that night. I didn't recognize something. My path was blocked. Then it suddenly moved, and I screamed bloody murder. It ran away somewhere in the room. I ran back down the hall for Rich. He came back out with me, turning the lights on along the way. No one was there. He thought it was a burglar. I yelled at him that I saw it. It had no face. It was dark, but I saw it. There was no sign of anyone breaking in. When I finally gave up and told him that I might have imagined the whole thing, Rich told me that the footsteps he heard were not just mine. He said they were louder and overlapped with mine. He'd heard it stomp off, probably back through the wall. We've been careful ever since, Rich said. Why all of a sudden? Rob asked him again. You said something about an imbalance? Yes, an abuse of power, maybe. There is a limited awareness, but that is not to say that it is non-existent altogether. There are those who somehow have access to this information as well. It didn't all get destroyed in the great fires of Rome's libraries. Others have found it, and found out who they are, and have abused that knowledge. You mean that they have turned on that other side of themselves? Exactly. I think I know who you're talking about, Rob said glumly. It's not just him. There have been others. Even that Viking clan used that child as a weapon. I don't know what else an activated person would be good for, but you can't say that just because their cause seemed noble, or because they appeared to be victims, or the more sympathetic side, that they were necessarily right. Nor can you say that they were right to use that power as they did. So why would they care now? There's an imbalance over there on their side too, I imagine. Maybe they all agree that enough is enough and it's time to end this, but I think it may be more like dissension in the ranks. An entire race is never in total agreement. If they are like any other civilization, then they are feuding over this. Still, the recall of the bloodline is happening. There is no certainty on any of this. It is all speculation still. Who knows what is going to happen? This guy, the famous one, he and I are linked up somehow. How do you mean? Rob told him of their connection, and how he was not just being targeted by the demons, but by the killer as well. He told him of their confrontation, and took his shirt off to show them the wounds. Rich and Betty both hissed Aaron between their teeth at the sight of the bruises and the gash in his shoulder. Rob pointed at the most faded bruise, and told him about how a demon had given him that one. Rich stared at it in horror, as if a realization of the actual danger he was in had finally fully sunk in. The mood plummeted in the room. I can't believe all you've been through, Rich said to him. I can't believe you're still alive. Me neither sometimes, said Rob. That's really why I'm here. I can sleep with a light on for the rest of my life. I don't care. We're lucky they're that easy to keep at bay. That luck may run out one day. I still believe that they are following their rules. That may be, but I'm in real danger from this guy right now. He can find me with our connection. I need to do something. I need to stop him. Rich then understood why Rob had come. Do you even know what you were saying? I knew when I left for this that I had to do something, but it's only very recently become obvious to me of what to do, of what to try. Haven't you ever wondered? No, it means certain death of some sort. You can't exist like that. Neither side will let you. I thought about that, but I have no other way to fight him. Look at me. I won't be like him. I'm me. I'm a good person. I'll use it for good. You need flesh. It has to be human. It has to be fresh. I'll find a way around that. There is no way around that, Rich yelled at him. Rich, Betty said his name to try to calm him down. You cannot do this. I'm sorry for you, but it may be better if he just kills you than the alternative. Better for who? Rob's voice was raised as well. For me? For all the people he kills after me? For this to just go on and on? Do you know of another way to stop him? Only they can stop him. Well, they are not doing a great job of it, and he needs to be taken off the planet. I don't have any choice but to fight. I want a real shot with this fucker. He looked at Betty. Sorry. She smiled at him. I think it's okay in this situation. Rob had been standing since he took his shirt off, but he sat back down. I need information on this. You told me you have it. I'm sorry this is hard, but I want that book. I will not be a party to this, Rich said calmly in his certainty of his position in the matter. God damn it, Richard, Betty screeched. It's not up to you. He is back to the wall here, and he needs an option. I say give it to him. Even if he can't win, he deserves to try all he can. What if he does win? Richard yelled back. It just goes on and on. Well, you don't get to try and control the outcome of everything in the world, she snapped. I would be responsible for this. This is not about you. 
Maybe this needs to happen. You don't know everything. This young man is not stupid. I'm sure he understands the consequences. Am I right? She asked Rob. Yes, ma'am, Rob responded. No, forget it, Rich said as he turned to Rob. And how dare you ask for such a personal piece of property of mine, Rich said. It's not even yours, you bastard, Betty retorted. No, forget it. Get the hell out of my house, Richard yelled at Rob as he stood up. Be reasonable, Betty told him. Get out, Richard was screaming. His face was beat red. Stop it right now, Betty scolded him. I want him out right now, you hear me? Richard looked right into Rob's eyes. Out now, he stomped off to his bedroom and slammed the door. I'm so sorry, she said to Rob. I'm sorry, I should go, Rob said, crushed. You wait one second, she whispered. Before he could reply, she ran off on tiptoes into another room of the house. She returned only a few seconds later. Here, she said as she handed him the book. I know that this is the one he's talking about. I've already flipped through it a time or two, and he never lets it get muddled in with all his other crap. Are you sure? He's really hot-tempered. He's a big old bear. He really is a sweet man. He would never touch me. I'm the pants wearer around here, so don't you worry. Take it, but go now before he catches you. I have to start yelling now, or he'll know something is up. God damn it, Richard, we haven't had anyone over in ages, and this is how you act? She smiled and whispered to Rob again. Go on now. He smiled back at her and mouthed the words, thank you. She yelled out again. What the hell is the matter with you screaming at someone like that? Rob turned to leave. He opened the door. On his way out, he heard her whisper to him again. Good luck, she said quietly to him. He nodded at her. As the door slowly shut behind him, she yelled again for her husband's benefit. He was just asking for help, you obstinate asshole. Chapter 11 Rob had to go somewhere that he wouldn't be easy to track. He needed some time. He had a book to read, but he knew that there definitely would not be enough time to read it thoroughly. It was crucial he get into it, but it would have to be yet another book to skim. He did not want to go to another hotel. He could not take a chance on being somewhere that the killer could find easily. Seeing a building, and maybe even an address, would make it too easy. Plus, there was that newer factor of knowing each other's thoughts when in that mental state. If Rob knew where he himself was, then so would the killer. He realized he would have to get lost to stay lost, but he needed to know what to do before getting there. He was pretty uncertain of where he was at the moment. He had been heading back south on I-5. He felt more comfort going in that direction than going further away from the city that did not feel like it was his home, but it was the closest thing to it. He wanted so badly to talk to Sue, but he wouldn't. She was out of it at last, and he would leave her there until it was over. He had a plan to get lost in some unknown wooded area until he had enough time to do what he needed to. The book would tell him what he had to take with him. If he would need electricity, then he would not be able to camp out as planned. He would risk it with the demons, but he would stay as far away from a wall as possible. He would do as the book dictated, but he hoped his plan and its plan would mesh well enough together so that he could do what he thought was best, and that was in the woods. He had gone over his speculation again of how the demons could maybe get you even if you weren't near a wall, but that was feeling less and less likely. He needed to read for some real insight. He needed light in order to read. He needed supplies. All those things could be accommodated by any gas station. He pulled off at the next exit. He was in a city called Willows, and he was exiting on County Road 50. He knew that, and when the killer went to sleep, then he would know that also. He would have to be quick. He could take more time later, once he was nice and lost. He couldn't wait. A gas station was just ahead. It was a shell. It was a sizable establishment with a big convenience store section attached. It should have what he was looking for. The first thing he sought was ample lighting. There were rows of lengthy fluorescent bulbs meeting in the middle of a pointed tin roof covering the pumps. He pulled into the lot and went to pump number six. There was only one other customer there. He went inside to the cashier and paid for another thirty bucks to go in the tank. He asked if they would mind if he stayed in the parking lot for a bit to rest up to get back on the road. The clerk said he couldn't sleep there. He said he just needed an hour or so to read, and he bought a cup of coffee to dissuade the employee from thinking he was going to set up camp there. The clerk said that should be fine. 